I don't know if it, if it goes on the camera, if you can see anything. Well, I can see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of mosquitoes. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome to Savar Russia, we are at the campsite, as you can see. <laughs> we have uh, some mosquitoes around and stuff and stuff, <clears throat> which is not a big surprise in this season, but uh, not at this time of year, but uh, we had very hot weather, we had a lot of rains and so on, so uh, we had a good amount this time, <clears throat> but uh, we just arrived. I have some different plans for this trip here, of course, and uh, I think I'm just gonna get my uh, rock here off and get the cameras out of the bag because I only have this small camera here, and we're gonna see what we're gonna do. Let me get undressed here in the mosquito hill and uh, I'll get back to you guys. <laughs> It's gonna be fun for, for you guys who always like to see me struggle in either the cold or with the mosquitoes and the box and all that good stuff. When we have this many mosquitoes, which is above average, then it's always a good thing to get a fire going and uh, the more smoke it makes the better. But uh, let me show you around a little bit. Here we have the old fireplace, here we have some firewood. <coughs> And I'm gonna rig up the microphones a little bit later. Now it is what it is. And over here we have another, a little uh, winter campsite, actually. And here we have some old Siberian log fire <coughs> and some firewood. So I think we're gonna transport some of this over there and. Uh, See what we can do because uh, I can see it's not so great to camp right there. Another good thing when we have uh, above average amount of mosquitoes is of course to apply some box spray, right? Yeah, box spray. Box spray on a fire, so it'll keep most of them at bay. And uh, I have some devices with me to, to sleep with and uh, we're gonna take a look at that later. And here we have my black backpack. This is why you don't want to wear black when you are around mosquitoes. Now we have a we have a dung load of them here, so uh, let's get some uh, fire going. Let's get some box spray going, and uh, and let's get on with the project here. I'd use this guy, the uh, bug guard here. It's good, but uh, as uh, most box sprays, you know, it doesn't really work for that long. I hope you can hear what I'm saying over there. And always with box spray, it's a very good idea to rub it in really, really well. Oh, and I'm gonna rub in with a mix of box spray and crunched mosquitoes. I say it's, it, it's good to rub it in, it lasts longer. Take my word for it. <laughs> so yeah, we have no food on this trip here whatsoever. I ate a bowl of soup some hours ago and uh, that's pretty much it. I have water because we don't have any water here. I have a self-made, homemade survival bag we're gonna try out. I wanted to try this for a long time actually, but as you know, I'm busy with the house. Busy with the house. Gotta get that house done and get back to normal, that will be pretty darn awesome. We have a knot down there, that is not so awesome. I don't know if it, if it goes on the camera, if you can see anything. Well, I can see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of mosquitoes. As I said, it's, uh, it's not extreme, but it's a little bit above average. 
Let's just see it like that. There's quite a lot. So the bark spray is definitely a survival item in these conditions here. Without the bark spray, mosquitoes will eat your face off in five minutes. Something along those lines anyway. No matter where and when, it's always good to start a fire at the very beginning before setting up camp so we can figure out where the smoke is going right. I've said this many times, but uh, it's a very good idea. <laughs> of course, I can see, we will see where the smoke generally goes. Because in the forest, the smoke can travel in weird directions. It would be a shame to set up nice shelter and everything exactly where the smoke will go. That is not so good. Ah, attack! That was a bomb attack. We have a double log fire here that I often make, super awesome, good for a lot of coals and we can actually make an anti-bark fire from it and we have a lot of embers, maybe we're gonna do that, maybe not, we will see, <clears throat> but as you can see the barks have tapered off a little bit, we have bark here, <laughs> but because of the fire and the smoke I'm taking it a little bit easy, a little bit. So what's really awesome about this, these short double log fires is that one thing is that they're good at cooking it, but we're not gonna need cooking <laughs> today. We're of course not so good at keeping it warm, of course, like in the summer it's not a problem, but uh, because of the two logs, the heat generally goes up and not so much out to the sides, right? so we can actually sit between, uh, close to the fire, no problem, it's not going to melt our rubber boots or anything like that. But also because the heat is concentrated between the logs, right? then we can just add stuff like this. This is pine branches, they were from a downed pine. But uh, they've been laying since winter and spring and rain during the summer here. But if we just pile them on, as you can see, I've been doing that. They will, of course, catch fire and dry out pretty, uh, pretty down fast, actually. But that is a good thing. So this is why I like these here a lot when I'm not really relying on heat. If I have to rely on heat, of course, Siberian log fire and Siberian log fire is also really really great in uh, rainy weather. I've shown that before I think I'll try and see if I can show it again but uh, for that we're gonna need some good thunderstorms which we had and uh, we most likely will have. Let's take a look at what we have in the pack. Here we have a first aid kit actually an advanced first aid kit we're gonna take a look at at some point probably in a, in a different video or separate video. We have some backing light for you guys, and for myself for that matter. 
we have this guy here. It's from the same manufacturer as the backpack, Savoto, in Finland. This is a mosquito net, or bark net, bark coat, as you can see. And it has a hood with a zipper. And that I'm gonna use for bark protection when I'm gonna sleep. Uh, you might ask yourself why I'm not using it today, today here when <laughs> there are so many mosquitoes. It's cooling down a little bit. It was only like 14, 15 degrees C's C today. And it's cooling down a little bit. So they're taking it a little bit more easy now, which is pretty awesome. But anyway, I simply cannot stand to have this net in front of my head but uh, and run around and do stuff. What we're gonna take a... We, we're gonna use it. I'm gonna just show you how I use it to sleep with. We have a tarp. This is a British uh, army, Basha. It's in a desert camo. It is uh, a real issue one. Beware of the copies from uh, Webtex. I had this tarp here for 10 years. I used it a lot. It is super awesome. I really like it and I uh, understand why the Russian army have partly copied it. We of course have the silky saw, big boy, the big boy 2000 from the Outback series. We have my uh, German army ground pad, which is not the best pad in the world, but uh, it's uh, awesome because it doesn't take up much space. It's like only like four millimeters thick, but uh, it's definitely due for now. And uh, this uh, configuration is good to sit on. And this we're gonna need now, basically. Here we have an item I'm pretty uh, proud of because uh, this is something me and Mrs. Survivor Russia have constructed. And it is of course Mrs. Survivor Russia which has stitched it together. I'm gonna be 100% uh, honest and say that uh, this is a copy, or my version, of the Jervin for Fjellduken. Because Fjellduken is really awesome. But it's also really, really expensive. So uh, what this is, is basically, as I said, my take on uh, the Fjellduken. It does the same things, you know. This is YKK zippers and... Uh, we don't have any grommets here, we only have these guys because... Uh, I like this better, and it's cheaper. So that's what we've done. The, the outer here is, uh, of course, a kind of a multicam, but it's 100% waterproof and not breathable, just like the Fjellduken. And uh, this we're gonna, uh, we're gonna spend the night in this guy here, because I really, really want to try it out. Here we have the, the inner liner. Insulation is uh, Prima Loft, just like the Fjellduken. We actually bought a big, darn big roll. I think that's 80 meters or something <laughs> of uh, Prima Loft, because uh, we of course plan to uh, to produce these and sell them, but most likely just uh, here in Russia. I don't know. We'll find out. But anyway, it's the first she made. We can see we have a little bit of the of liner here and so on. But uh, all the seams are welded with the silicone. Anyway, it's the exact same dimensions as the as the Fjellduken, as the Jermen bag. Toilet paper, and that's it. Ah yeah, many of you guys asked me about, uh, or not asked, but said, yeah, but we are in my knife review video there, right? Or, not in review actually, but uh, why I was not carrying a multi tool? I'm surprised you are not carrying a multi tool, but I do. We have a multi tool here in the pouch. On all three packs that I use the most, I have a multi tool, multi tool in the pouch or strapped to the molly of the backpacks. So, uh, yeah, I have multi tool, but only when I'm carrying my backpacks. That's it for uh, our gear and equipment. Of course, have this little uh, chest pouch. But today I'm just using it as a camera bag. And uh, there's the knife and there's a ferro rod and that. So uh, that's what it is. I am positively surprised that the mosquitoes are taking it easy now. That is super awesome. That is really, really good news. But I have a feeling that these buggers are going to come out during the night. 
we have a small printer here. Uh, I think it's of course always good to have a first aid kit with some uh, heavy bandages and some other tourniquet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. Let's find out where to camp and how to camp. Do we need the tarp or what not? I have an idea guys. Let's send up the drone and see what the sky and everything looks like. See if uh, we have a nice uh, sunset or what. So as you might have noticed, I've not used my drone a whole lot for a long, long time. But that's because my phone here, the USB is screwed up so it can only charge and not uh, operate with anything. But I got a new phone for review and so on. And this is a Blackview BV9200. And this is an awesome, awesome outdoors phone. It's the best phone I tried. One of the reasons is that it can work with the drone. Not, there's, I tried quite a few outdoors phones which were not able to do that. Getting a little chilly. It's not gonna be super cold, of course. I think it's my <laughs> plus 10, 12, something like that. So it's like 10 already. And uh, of course, here in the forest, it looks pretty darn dark. But you can see out there that is kind of northern direction, right? I know for a fact that it's gonna be almost daylight at uh, 2 o'clock at night. So uh, I think we're gonna hit the bag now and uh, get a few hours of sleep. We have this guy here. This is basically just a shirt made out of a very fine knitting <coughs> with a hood. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of my jacket and I'm gonna keep my, uh, my wonderful hat here on. I'm gonna get rid of the headlight, of course. And uh, I'm gonna put this uh, bark suit here on and close the net and uh, the bill of the cap here will keep the net from falling on my face because if the net just lays on my face the mosquitoes will just sit there but right now there's almost no mosquitoes so uh, that is a very good thing. If we pull this guy here down and zip this guy here up and I hope you can see that the, that the brim here is going to keep the or the bill is going to keep the netting off my face so that's how we're going to sleep so guys see you in the morning or see you during the night I don't know we'll find out <laughs> so you don't get rid of me that easy <laughs> I made myself a little uh, night table there from a tree stump or from a piece of firewood and uh, I just wanted to notify you that it's a really nice in this bag here. <coughs> the Yavin bag I have it has 60 weight. The, the weight is 60 grams per square meter. And this is 
100 or 120. And uh, it's feelable, it's super awesome. <laughs> so, see you later, guys. Hello there, guys. So, it's like 5 o'clock. It's like 5.02. It's been light for a while. And this was rather chilly. But the bag is good. The bag is nice. But it's rather chilly. As I say, I'm only in uh, two long sleeve t shirts. And my jacket for a pillow. <laughs> Well, I was asked in my stream uh, how I got into the outdoors, or what we can call it. And uh, that's pretty simple. I always like to be in the outdoors, and sometimes I just had this urge to get out and just stay in the forest, sleep in the forest. And uh, this is one of these times, no special purpose really. Other than testing out this bag, of course, which we made during the winter. And uh, just hanging out in the woods. And making a little bit harder on myself, not bringing any food or anything like that. <laughs> I think it got a little bit colder than I thought it would be. I think it must have been below 10 plus. That's minus 10, of course. <laughs> I think it's been below 10 plus. Which is of course cold enough. Alright guys, so we're on the way out. It's been an awesome night. It's been an awesome trip. The cuckoos, because there's a lot of them, have gone completely nuts this morning here. They're gone cuckoo. So yeah, that's basically it for this uh, little trip. I think I have an idea for another one. So guys, Please check the links in the description and uh, please consider anyway to support the channel. You can do that via subscribe star, you can uh, buy merchandise, you can become a member, you can use uh, super thanks and uh, all sorts of stuff that uh, YouTube have enabled. So uh, until next time guys, get out of the train, get done, do something awesome. See you in the next video guys. Thank you very much for your time.